achieved. Hey, Fight Fans, welcome back to Kamikaze Overdrive MMA Predictions. It's me, Scott Johnson, your host. And on this episode of the show, we're breaking down the upcoming UFC 163 Aldo versus the Korean Zombie event, or Aldo versus Zhang event, depending on what you want to call it. It takes place on August 3rd from the HSBC Arena in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Yes, and that's right, it's another one of those Brazilian events, so keep an eye out as traditionally the locals do exceptionally well, and that does not bode well for the challenger in Chan Sung Jung. But we'll see anyway how I break this fight down. I'm giving you my five main card predictions, and uh, all of my preliminary predictions will be Predictions will be available at KamikazeOverdrive.net. I'm coming off a fantastic show. I went 9-3 overall at UFC on Fox 8. Two major upsets that just didn't come in the books. All I had to do is hit one of them. It would have been a huge night, either Tim Means or Jake Ellenberger. Means close. Ellenberger not so much with Rory McDonald fighting a very safe but effective fight. Uh, as always, the Kamikaze Overdrive Prediction Tournament still underway. We're headed to round three. Eight, fight, eight guys left, and now we're down to the elite of the elite. We started with 32. These guys have now beaten not one but two opponents to get where they are, and now they're fighting for a chance to go to the semifinals. So their predictions will be available as well right before the show starts at KamikazeOverdrive.net. So it might not help you if you're betting and you want a little bit more insight or at least a little bit see who these experts are picking. It might not help you for the first couple of fights, but certainly for the main card and the later prelims, worth checking out. That's enough for me. We've got five main card predictions. Let's get into them. We kick things off in the UFC's flyweight division as John, hands of stone, Lineker, 21-6-0, battles Jose, Jose, no chance, Tomei, 33-3-0 with two no contests. Lineker comes in riding a two-fight winning streak after dropping his promotional debut. Well, no chance has put a, together a pretty exceptional winning streak of his own prior to picking up this fight on short notice. Now, Lineker, a very aggressive striker, and he has significant power, which is rare for a flyweight. He has nine wins by knockout. In his debut against Louis Gaudino, he brawled and slowed down, but he is much more patient in his wins over uh, Yasuhiro Yoroshanti and uh, Azamat Gashimov, showing a much more controlled attack, but still very aggressive and very dangerous. 6.74 strikes landed per minute, very impressive. He does get hit a lot at 4.32 strikes absorbed, but still those stats favor him. He changes levels exceptionally well, throws a lot of big hooks, has that big right hand, which we, which we saw him drop Gashim off with, and he stopped him with a body kick, again, targeting the body exceptionally well. He has been submitted three times in his career, but he showed exceptionally strong grappling defense against Gashimov, shutting down the Sambo fighters at takedown attempts. Very low stance, used those underhooks effectively, and, and you know, shut down the takedown attempts. Now, for Tomei, he's a he spot for both Shuto and Jungle Fight in Brazil. 38 fights, so a lot of experience. 15 wins by knockout, 13 wins by submission. All three of his career defeats have all come by sub. Now, if you look at his record, he's faced less than stellar opposition, has what you would call a padded record, facing a lot of guys who are very new to the sport and might not have been okay to fight in other areas based on the commission, but here we're given the opportunity to fight a guy with a lot more experience. Uh, his biggest career opponent, uh, Juicier Formiga, who he lost to in a fight there, so certainly when he stepped up, he did not come up with the victory in that sense anyway. Uh, he's very talented on the ground, at least from the footage I've seen, very willing to go to the ground, active guard and hips, can pull off submissions off his back, good transitions and good guard passes when he does get on top. He has some takedowns, but I didn't see anything extraordinary that he's going to really threaten Lineker with. Uh, but he's also quite comfortable on the feet. He has some decent leg kicks. We'll mix things up. Superman punch, spinning back fist, jumping knees are all things I've seen him show. Uh, he will also change levels well. And he has not bad footwork and will use some feints trying to get it to draw his opponent into attacking. Uh, what I expect is that Lineker appears to be really coming into his own right now and really showing some impressive striking skills, both technique to go with the power that he throws. Uh, I expect his speed to be an advantage and also, I think, the power. I think if he shares unloading on guys, that really backs him up. Lineker needs to be very careful in this fight not to be countered or taken down with his aggressive forward push. That could be an issue. So my prediction is John Lineker to defeat Jose Tomei by knockout. Our next fight comes to us in the UFC's middleweight division as Talis latest 24-0 returns to the UFC against Tom Kong Watson 16-5-0. Latest has won three in a row all outside of the promotion. Well, Tom Watson defeated Stanislav Nedkov to pick up his first promotional victory in his second attempt. Now, this is your traditional grappler versus striker matchup. Tell us latest, though, coming into this bout with a year-long layoff, which is something to take into consideration, but he has significant UFC experience with eight previous fights, including fighting Anderson Silva for the title. Now, he's a BJJ black belt with 13 wins by submission. He averages 2.4 takedowns, which is good, but only at 27%, so he needs a lot of attempts to get the fight where he wants it. He did pick up four against Alessio Sakara and three against Ryan Jensen, both in his earlier UFC runs, so he's very capable of putting guys on the ground when he focuses on that. 
Uh, body lock takedowns are traditional style. He likes when he connects his hands along the cage. He will also try and slam an opponent or just drag him to the ground. Just his focus in getting the fight to the mat. He's willing to pull guard. Very aggressive guard, which you should be if you're going to pull guard. Active legs. He's very good at chaining submissions together. We saw him against Jason, Jason or sorry Jesse Taylor, and he's you know good transitions. Excellent guard passing ability when he gets on top as well. Uh, nice step from half guard into an arm triangle when he fought and defeated Matt Horowitz. He really likes the arm triangle. That's something he looks for the instant he gets on top. If he can set it up, he will. Now, Kong Watson has never faced a BJJ black belt of Talos Latus' capabilities before. He's faced some grapplers, but nothing on this level. He has two losses by submission, plus he lost to the aforementioned Jesse Taylor based on Taylor's grappling skills. So far in two UFC bouts, he's been taken down ten times, five in each. He was taken down by Brad Tavares. When he was getting way too aggressive with his strikes, and even a very tired stance lab, Nedkov took him down with relative ease, and that's something to be concerned with. Now, Watson, he's a very solid kickboxer, and he has finishing capabilities. Eight wins by knockout. He has good hands, very good kicks, likes that stepping knee, and a lead switch kick. He's also a very heavy clinch fighter. We saw him against Nedkov use that tie clinch and deliver some brutal knees and elbows, eventually leading to the finish. He's an aggressive striker, and I expect him to come out very aggressive here, but he will slow down. For latest on the feet, decent leg kicks, serviceable striking, but again, he's never been knocked out, but his focus is getting, on getting his opponent to the mat. Uh, a little bit of questionable cardio on latest's part. If this uh, fight is, if he's pushed in a matchup, if he's pushed in the bout, he has gone decision eight times with the five and three record, so it's not like he's not capable of winning a, a three-round fight. Uh, the way I look at this is Watson was taken down with relative ease by his last two opponents, and neither one are as good a grappler as Talos Latus. Latus might only need one or two opportunities to get the back or set up an arm triangle and finish the fight. But uh, as much as I like Tom Watson, I think it's a bad matchup for him. Additionally, it's in Brazil, so my prediction is Talos Latus to defeat Tom Watson by submission. Remaining with the 185ers, we have Cesar Mutante Ferreira, 6-2-0, the first Brazilian Ultimate Fighter winner against Tiago Moreta Santos. Ferreira is coming off a win in his debut, which was, of course, the tournament finals against Sergio Moraes. Well, Santos was an Ultimate Fighter 2 com competitor and has not actually made his official promotional debut yet. As I said, Ferreira, tough one Brazilian winner, but he's been out of action for almost 14 months, which is a long time to be on the shelf for a young fighter with relatively limited experience. He trains with the Black Zillions with Vitor, so certainly a good camp he's coming out of. He was originally, faced, uh, originally scheduled to face C.B. Dalloway, then Clint Hester, and now, you know, a third opponent change, which can play some games with a, with a young fighter as well. Now, Thiago, Thiago Santos, uh, tough Brazilian two competitor. He was eliminated in the quarterfinals. He actually lost and then got a shot to come back in as part of the uh, wild card matchup. Uh, this is his official UFC debut. He hasn't fought in pro in roughly 12 months, but at least he's been a little more active competing on the show. Now, he fought on the show at welterweight, which is his normal weight class, which is something to consider. He will have a slight reach advantage, actually, in this fight, but physically he's going to be the smaller fighter if you compare the two uh, their, their builds. Now, Santos, four wins by knockout, one win by submission, three wins by decision. On the show, he had two decision wins and two decision losses. So, he's, you know, KO knockouts appear to be his best path to victory, at least. Uh, good strikes overall, some decent punch kick combos, nice jabs, spinning attacks as well. I expect him to have a slight speed advantage, which should help him out if he can utilize it. But the big thing I saw in most of his fights, he can be taken down. He has trouble with takedowns, he's capable of getting back up, but that's something, you know, if you're going to be taken down over and over and over again, that's very, very, you know, something difficult to deal with. Uh, and going one further, when he fought Leo Santos on the show, after Santos established the takedowns, uh, Silva had a lot of trouble pulling the trigger with the strikes because he was—he knew he could be taken down at any moment, and that would be the end of the round. At least it appeared to be. So he did not wasn't nearly as aggressive or effective with the striking. Now Mutante is a BJJ black belt and a Capoeira master, so grappling and striking. Only seven pro fights: three wins by knockout, one by sub, one by decision. On the Ultimate Fighter, he had two submission wins, one knockout, one decision. So he can basically do it all. He has a big power overhand right, likes to throw an uppercut as well, good elbows as well. He uses that tie clinch effectively. And, but, you know, he will overswing a little bit with his punches. He reminds me of a less refined uh, Junior Dos Santos when he throws some of his strikes. Solid head kick. He'll throw a lot of those capoeira kicks, which are high risk but can pay off big time. And we see, we saw him help, uh, hurt uh, Sergio Moraes when he landed with the big shot there. Uh, he does have a tendency to leave a little bit of opening, a few openings when he's attacking. Uh, he got hurt moving forward by Moraes and actually nearly stopped, and he was countered a couple of times in that fight by a less than cap less than you know talented striker. He also was knocked out by um, in his earlier in his career. In 25 seconds, he just walked right into a counter right hand. It was over. Very difficult uh, punch to take flat on the jaw, and that's something that you know concerns me. But maybe not so much in this fight. 
Uh, for takedowns, he will pick up his opponents, big slams. He's physically he's a strong guy, likes to tie up guys, drag into the fight. Good guillotine capabilities. He's very strong in that sense and really focuses on that maneuver. Uh, from top position, drops some big ground and pound with some elbows. He should be able to use a size on top in this fight. For Silva, he needs to use his speed and counters and look for those openings that are created when his opponent gets, when Mutante gets too aggressive. But for, certainly for Mutante, he will pack a bigger punch. But the takedowns are the key for him. I think he's going to ground Santos, and it'll also shorten up Santos' ability to attack because he's afraid of being taken down. My prediction is Cesar Mutante to defeat Thiago Santos by submission. In the co-main event of the evening, we are in the UFC's light heavyweight division as the former UFC champion, Lyoto the Dragon Machida, 19-3-0, battles Phil, Mr. Wonderful Davis, 11-1-0 with one no contest. Both guys are currently riding two fight winning streaks. Now this is your wrestler versus striker matchup, Davis, the wrestler, Machida the striker. Now Phil, he's an NCAA Division I wrestler, averages 2.76 takedowns at a 48% clip, so pretty good with his takedown game. He's also a BJJ Purple Belt with a very impressive and improving submission game. Four submission wins overall in his career, three in the UFC, including tapping out Alexander Gustafson and Tim Boach. So very good on the ground when he gets the opportunity. He's got a very good power double, very solid single leg as well. He's very explosive, really pushed through guys, and he's hard to handle, and he sets them up with his strikes while attacking and ducking underneath. Now Machida, he's a BJJ black belt, but he only has two wins by submission. He's a very capable fighter on the ground as well. His numbers, 1.74 takedowns at 66%. He doesn't use them nearly as much as Phil Davis though, does. Good trips. He will use his speed. We saw him take both Tito Ortiz and Dan Henderson down, which is not something, you know, it's another those things aren't easy to do. More importantly for Machida, 79% takedown defense. Very hard to take down. And uh, most takedowns in any one fight came early in his UFC career. And... Uh, over the last 10, his last 10 UFC fights, a grand total of three takedowns have been thrown his way. So he's very tough to get down, both because he's capable of defending and he's just hard to get his, your hands on to start with. Uh, he managed his distance very well. We saw him fight Raymond Bader, who didn't even attempt an official takedown attempt. And of course, Henderson, who's a very good wrestler as well, he tried three, but it's just very difficult, as I said, to get in range against this guy. Uh, one big thing with opponents, if they are going to set up a grappling game, they need some level of striking skills to help, help them close that distance before they can even think about shooting. And again, I said that's what Bader didn't have. He used that lateral movement very well. We always talk about him being very elusive. He has excellent timing, and he can counter, and he does it lightning fast. Uh, strikes landed per minute, 2.86, versus only 1.41 strikes absorbed per minute, 62%. He doesn't throw a lot, but he makes them count, and he makes his opponent swing and miss a lot. He attacks in bursts and or counter strikes, and it really throws guys off when they can't hit them, frustrates them, and makes them get over aggressive and fight a different style than what they're used to fighting. Uh, he has seven wins by knockout, including Ryan Bader, Randy Couture, Rashad Evans, and Tiago Silva. So those are impressive names for a guy not necessarily known for his knockout skills. And now Bader was a perfect example of a guy who couldn't close the distance and ran into that counter because he got too aggressive. But at the same time with Machida, he lost to Rampage because he was too passive, and Rampage was aggressive and chasing him down to the judges. I think inappropriately, but still, they gave it to Rampage in that fight. We also saw him get knocked out by Shogun coming in, so Machida's far from the perfect fighter, but we've also seen you know, him drop a little bit of weight, and he makes him faster. Now, Shogun did have success with leg kicks in the first fight, and Davis, that's potentially one of his best weapons, are his leg kicks when he's standing, and we'll see if he can use that against Machida to help close that distance. Uh, a pr improving striking game for Phil Davis. He's going to have a five, five inches of reach, but I don't think he's ready to stand with Machida and trade. I think that would be a significant mistake. Uh, strikes landed per minute 3.3 for Davis against 1.08 strikes absorbed, but those numbers are skewed by the time he spends on the mat. Guys aren't hitting him off the ground where he's dro dropping some ground and pounds, so not necessarily the best skills to compare there at least. Uh, we saw him against Little Nog, he struggled to get him on the mat, and against Rashad Evans, very limited success in his takedowns there, which forced him to strike with him, which was a recipe for disaster. At least it did not work out too well for Phil Davis. Evans kind of pot shot at him, picked him apart. I think Davis is going to have even more trouble getting this fight to the ground. Machida's way too fast and has too good a technique striking-wise for Davis to close the distance. And I think he's going to have the same thing Bader does. He's going to run into a big shot. So my prediction is Lyoto Machida to defeat Phil Davis by knockout. Now in our main event, the UFC featherweight title will be on the line as Jose Aldo, the champion, 22-1-0, battles injury replacement challenger, the Korean zombie Chan Sung Jung, 13-3-0. Aldo is riding, I believe, a 14-fight winning streak, including impressive victories for Frankie Edgar, Chad Mendes, Kenny Florian, and Mark Hominick, all inside the octagon. While the Korean Zombie has won three fights in a row, all since coming onto the UFC, beating Leonard Garcia, Mark Hominick, and most recently, Dustin Poirier. Now, this is originally Anthony Pettis was supposed to be here, so the Zombie's stepping in. He's coming off a 14-month layoff, which should create some ring rust. 
With 14 months away from the cage for the Korean Zombie, you, he had to assume he'd be fighting in the elite part of the division when he came back. Maybe not against the champ, but either way, I'm sure we're going to see more improvements and some, you know, some new things from the challenger coming into this fight with such a long layoff. He's a black belt in Taekwondo, green belt in Judo, a blue belt in BJJ, and a former kickboxer, so a lot of fighting disciplines that he's uh, building on coming into this. Three wins by knockout overall, eight wins by submission. He also had 11 wins by knockout as a kickboxer, so very impressive and, you know, well-rounded fighter. Aldo, on the other hand, BJJ black belt, who just a pair of wins by submission, but 13 wins by knockout, so again, well-rounded as well. The Zombie's going to have a two-inch reach advantage in this fight, which is something Aldo's not, you know, normally, that's something he doesn't have to deal with normally because he usually is the longer fighter. Uh, if you look at all those striking, he has speed, timing, power, he does it all, technique, he's a dangerous, dangerous striker. We have, he has that brutal kicking game to the body, legs, he'll go to the head as well. We saw what he did to Uriah Faber, he dropped Frank Yeager a couple of times, he just snaps him off and they just cripple his opponent. I also like that jumping knee, you can throw at a moment's notice, he dropped Cub Swanson with it very quickly back in the WEC. Uh, his hands, very quirk, one, two, straight, long punches, stiff, long jab, it just, it's very difficult uh, for opponents to get in through those straight punch punches, and the stats show that. 3.46 strikes landed permanent for Aldo, versus only 1.91 strikes absorbed uh, from his opponents. 73% striking defense, so he's hard to hit, and it's equally as hard to avoid uh, getting hit by him. He moves away from his attack very well, and again, hard to hit. He will counter effectively when you come forward, because he's so quick. Now, the Korean Zombie, 4.61 strikes landed per minute, so he puts up some big numbers, but he also gets hit a lot. 3.77, and that's not something you want to do against the champion. 64% striking defense, but a lot that number is, so, is high because of the brawls he's been in with guys like Leonard Garcia, who will swing and miss a lot of the time. Uh, spinning back fists, jumping knees. He'll throw a lot of stuff. He's very creative, very aggressive. Uh, he's shown more control of late in his attacks, but he will still will brawl and swing wildly, and he needs to pressure Aldo early and really get in his face and back him up. Uh, when he does swing and punch sometimes, he will leave his chin exposed. He has limited footwork. He has a tendency to plod forward and stand still sometimes when attacking. Doesn't use a lot of angles, and he'll drop his hands. Those are all bad things when you're facing someone as technically gifted as Jose Aldo. Uh, he allowed Poirier to land leg kicks continually against Aldo. You can't do that. you got to check him, and even when you check him, it's still going to hurt. He did like try and catch the, t the leg for, for a takedown, but I don't think he will do that against Aldo because he's just so quick. Uh, now the Korean Zombie, 1.57 takedowns at 83%. Four, he used four against Dustin Poirier, and he showed in that fight he used takedowns to change the tempo and get his opponent guessing. It was very impressive in that way. He's very gifted on the ground. We saw the twister submission of Leonard Garcia. Uh, he has good ground and pound, really likes to use his elbows. He's very good if he can get on top. Now, for Aldo, he will use takedowns. We saw him throw five against Mark Hominick, which was impressive in that sense, but more impressive, a 92% takedown defense. It's that Nova Uniao, guys. We saw him shrug off Kenny Florian, Chad Mendes, and Frank Yeager with relative ease trying to take him down, I think, Edgar got him a couple times, but not until he tired down. And the thing is, when you're trying to take Aldo down, he never backs up straight, and he has those counter knees. You might shoot, and you might get yourself knocked out. I think we saw Mendez get knocked out with a knee, or with a knee or an elbow late in that fight, or early in that fight as well. Now, Aldo, he was too fast for Frank Yeager, and he did a ton, a ton of damage early, and that says a lot, because it's hard to be too fast for Edgar, but Aldo was. I don't think the Korean Zombie has the pace to push the fight early, or the cardio to expose him late. Zombie's aggressive, but I think he's going to get beat up coming forward and trying to be too... He doesn't have that speed attack. It's more, I'm going to come forward and keep, you know, take damage and give you damage. You can't trade shot for shot with Aldo, which I think he's going to end up having to do, and it's just not going to work out. Uh, Korean Zombie's not that far from getting knocked out by George Root from a head kick. I know he's changed up the way he fights, but I still just don't see him being, you know, in the same league as Aldo, especially coming off such a long layoff in the end with the ring rust. So my prediction is Jose Aldo defeat the Korean Zombie by TKO and retain his title. And I could see it actually being at the hand the result of leg kicks and Zombie not being able to continue. Either way, Aldo over Zombie for the title. So those are my five main card predictions for UFC 163. All of my preliminary predictions will be available at KamikazeOverdrive.net. This is the first of three events to kick off the third round of the Kamikaze Overdrive prediction tournament. So make sure the eight competitors still going. You get your picks into me as soon as possible, you know, just before the fights start. Then I post the fights. The bet packs as well will be available for this event for 10 bucks. Get all the information you possibly can get. It should be a good show. Lots of money to be made as always. And thank you very much for listening to all of my followers and subscribing and commenting. Everything else you guys do that make this possible. And uh, I'll see you back here. we got a lot of fights coming up in the near future. And I hope you enjoy them. Thanks for listening.